elasticity to. Cross elasticity of demand looks at how the percent change in the quantity demand of one product responds to the percent change in price of another product. And so we can use this to determine the type of relationship and the strength of the relationship. So if XED is positive, it's going to show that we have a substitute. And if XED is negative, it means we have a complement. Substitute products are those products that are used interchangeably. So I use product A or product B. And complements are products that are used together. I use product A with product B. Also important is the value. If the XED value is close to zero, then it's a weak relationship. And if the absolute value of the XED is far from zero, we have a strong relationship. So when we get XED values that are 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, that signifies a stronger relationship than zero. And once we have XED values that have an absolute value of one or greater, then we have a particularly strong relationship. Businesses want to know about XED because really what they want to know is the relationship of their products to other products on the market, specifically how their product will respond when the price of another product changes. So let's use an example of the price of ice cream going up 20%. This will have impact on other products. The first will be ice cream cones. In this example, when the price of ice cream goes up 20%, the quantity demanded for ice cream cones decreases 40%. If we plug those values into the formula, percent change in quantity demand of cones over percent change in price of ice cream, we see we have negative 40 over positive 20. The value is negative 2. Because it's negative, we see that we have complements. Sure enough, ice cream cones and ice cream are complements. And because the value is greater than 1, in fact, quite far from 0, it's a strong relationship. So we see there are close complements, ice cream and ice cream cones, based on the data here. Let's say at the same time the quantity demanded for cake increased 20%. So as the price of ice cream increases 20%, the quantity demanded of cake increases 20%. So we plug those values in, the percent change in quantity demand of cake over the percent change in price of ice cream. We get plus 20 over plus 20. That's a value of positive 1. So the positive means they're substitutes. And again, that value is pretty far from 0, so I'm going to say that they are close substitutes. Just thinking about them practically, ice cream cones are clearly complements, and we would expect when the price of ice cream to go up, the demand for ice cream will go down, and so the demand for ice cream cones will also go down. While if the price of ice cream goes up and the demand for ice cream goes down, then the demand for cake might go up a little bit because people might be looking for a dessert alternative. One last example here is the quantity demanded of apples, and in this example those only go up 2%. So when I put the values in, I see that there is plus 2% over plus 20%, meaning that the demand for apples increased 2% in response to the 20% change in the price for ice cream. And the value is positive 0.1, so there is a weak relationship there. Yes, there is some relationship, and um, if it's positive, you could say that there are substitutes, in this case apples and ice cream. But there's such a small impact on the quantity demanded for apples that it's tough to say that there actually is a relationship. Income elasticity of demand looks at how the quantity demanded for a product changes in response to a change in consumer income. And so there's three values that we're interested in. The first is when YED is greater than positive 1. Those are superior products. Often we look at them as luxury goods. And when the value is greater than positive 1, it means that the increase in income leads to a significant increase in quantity demanded. We could also have a YED uh, between positive 1 and 0. So it's positive, but it's between 1 and 0. Those are necessities. And so in those cases, when income goes up, there's only a minor increase in quantity demanded. And then finally, we have products where the YED value is less than zero. Those are inferior products. Those are unique products that when there is an increase in income, people actually demand those products less. So when income goes up, when the denominator is positive, the numerator is actually negative because people are moving away from those products. And the example of that would be store brand goods. Another example is over a long period of time, bicycles, if people can afford more cars as their income goes up. So let's take a look at some examples using income elasticity of demand. And really, it's all about for a government or perhaps a firm, as a nation develops and the economy grows, incomes should go up.
So if you're in a country that is experiencing economic growth, maybe an LDC that is emerging into a developed economy, it's better to focus on superior goods. So let's say in a given year, consumer income increases 2%. In this country, the quantity demanded of movies went up 6% during that same year. If I plug in the formula, percent change in quantity demand was 6%, the percent change in income was 2%, plus 6 over plus 2 equals 3. Movies are superior products. They're luxury goods. People have more money in their, pro in their pocket. They tend to spend it on unnecessary things, but things that they wanted. The quantity demanded of milk will only increase 1%. If I plug these values in, positive 1 over positive 2 equals 0.5. It's a positive value, demand for milk went up a little bit, but it only went up slightly compared to the increase in income. So that 0.5 value reveals that the product is a necessity. People don't go crazy buying milk just because they have more money in their pocket. They might be a little more frivolous and they might buy a little more, but they're not going to buy the same way that they increase their consumption of movies. Finally, we have the store brand foods in this example, and in this case, there's a 3% decrease in the quantity demanded for store brand goods. And if I plug that value into the formula, we see that negative 3% over a positive 2% increase in income leads to a value of negative 1.5, and that's an inferior good. So in this case, as people's incomes went up to 2%, they moved away from store brand foods because now they could buy more of the name brand foods that, for whatever reason, are perceived to be of better quality. And so this final bullet is the important point when it comes to YED. As an economy develops and incomes increase across an economy or across a nation, it is best to focus on superior goods because that's where the most profit is. Continue producing necessity goods because there'll be a slight increase and those goods are, of course, necessities. You need them. And important, shift away from inferior goods. You want to produce the goods that people want more of and, of course, move away from the goods that people don't want as their incomes go up. The last elasticity is price elasticity of supply. And the, value, the formula looks very similar to price elasticity of demand. It's percent change in quantity supplied over percent change in price. So in this case, how does the quantity supplied react to a change in price? And just like price elasticity of demand, the magic number for PES is 1. And when price elasticity of supply is greater than 1, it's elastic. And when price elasticity of supply is less than 1, it's inelastic. What do those values mean? When it's elastic, it means that a change in price leads to a large change by the firm as they try to respond as per the law of supply. And when that value is less than 1, it means that price changes, but the firms don't really change their habits. Now, uh, it's important to know that the law of supply will always apply here. Uh, if the price of a product goes up, quantity supplied will go up, ceteris paribus. And if the price of a product decreases, quantity supplied will decrease, ceteris paribus. Because firms want to produce products that sell at higher prices and not produce products that sell at low prices. Anyway, what two factors affect the firm's ability to respond to the change in price? The first is cost of factors of production. If cost of factors of production are high, it's very difficult for the firm to, say, increase their production when prices go up. Even though they want to increase their production as the market price goes up, they might not easily be able to. Time is another factor. In just a short time, if the market price is going up, they want to increase their supply, they may not be able to respond in a short period of time. And so an example I've given is, let's say um, there's an unexpected demand for smartphones. Well, the problem is an unexpected demand means it occurred over a short period of time. And so while that new increased demand for smartphones would be driving up the price, um, firms will not be able to respond in a short period of time. Also, smartphones are costly to produce. It's not easy for firms that make smartphones to suddenly double their output. So if there's an increase in demand for smartphones that would shift the demand curve left, it would put upward pressure on prices. Firms would love to supply more of the product, but if they don't have a lot of time to react and the cost of factors of production are high, they're not going to be able to adjust as quickly as they would like, and that will be inelastic price elasticity of supply. 
So the last bullet is important. Firms need to be aware of price elasticity of supply. Firms will always follow the law of supply. However, the ability to respond to a change in price is affected by the cost of factors of production and the time that they have to react to that change in price. So that wraps up part two of our elasticity presentations.